Awesome, Sean. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Okay. So everyone, I want to thank everyone for taking the time out for joining us tonight. I am being joined by Jordana Botting. And I believe, Jordana, this is our fourth session. Yes. Yay. Yeah, we talked one. about what was the first one? It was it not Transylvania. It was, it was Great Lakes. I think we talked about the first one. So I'm looking forward to the Great Lakes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Viking, you're going to get into that, but Viking's going to be uh, on the Great Lakes. So everyone, please sit back, relax, and Jordana's going to tell us a little bit about what's happening now with Viking. Thank you so much, Lisa. Hello, everyone. A little bit about me before I get into this. Um, I have been in the cruise industry for over 20 years and in my career I've been on anywhere from a 30 passenger yacht to a 5,000 passenger mega ship and I really love working for Viking because I share the same beliefs as Viking when it comes to travel. At Viking we believe that it should be more than just an experience, it should be a doorway to cultural insight, personal enrichment. And we believe, of course, the best way to travel and immerse yourself into new cultures is by the world's rivers, oceans, and of course, now the Great Lakes. So for those of you joining today that were on our past, uh, I guess, presentations, welcome back. For our new attendees, let me give you an overview of who Viking Cruises is, when we started, and uh, where we go around the world. So we started in 1997. We'll be celebrating our 25th anniversary this August. And we started with our first four river ships on the rivers of Russia. And at that time, we were delivering the most culturally enriching and destination-focused itineraries. And this pretty much began the modern river cruise industry as we know it today. Now in 2015, we reinvented ocean cruising by offering that exact same destination focused cruising as we offer on the rivers, on the oceans. And this has led us to become one of the top rated small ship ocean cruise lines out there. Our ocean ships only hold 930 passengers. Now, after leading the river, street, river cruise industry for over two decades and reinventing ocean cruising, we are now going to be taking our destination focused journeys to the far reaches of the globe and close to home on the Great Lakes with our Viking Expedition products. So with Viking, you'll be able to explore all seven continents with us. We visit 95 countries, 403 ports, five oceans, 20 rivers, and now the five Great Lakes. Now a bit about us. While much of the other cruise lines are building these bigger ships and more theme park style attractions on the ships, we're taking a different approach to cruising by focusing on the destination and the people of those destinations. We've created all of our cruises for that curious traveler. So that person, if you are that person that wants to get into the most intimate nuances, you want to learn all about the history, the culture, the geography, we will do that. Our ships, we sail right into the heart of the city, allowing you more time in the port of call to explore and even more overnights in a lot of our destinations. And as an effective operator, we like to pass the savings on to you by offering you a cruise fare with everything you're going to need from meals to beverages to free Wi-Fi. We even include a free shore excursion in every port of call that you go visit. Now you combine that all with our award-winning crew who will exceed your expectations and my favorite part only having to unpack once a Viking cruise really is a great way to explore the world in comfort. Now all of our ships so we have our river ocean and expedition ships they're very elegant intimate ships what we've done is we thoughtfully designed all of our ships to make sure you are connected with the destination in every possible way. They're very stylish and understated ships. What we have is, no matter what ship you're on, we have these beautiful, spacious common areas, intimate lounges, and our elegant dining areas. All of our decor, and you can kind of see in the pictures we're showing, it's that Scandinavian decor. We like to bring in our Viking heritage and our design. So we showcase the natural grains in the woods. We add accents of le leather and teak just to create that comfort and serenity on board. Now, on of our ships, you're not going to find a kids club or a casino or any kids pools. We are an adult only cruise line. So you have to be 18 years or older to sail on board of Viking. 
Now, all of our staterooms, well, we also pay attention to the fine art of detail when designing them. So we make the most out of the passing scenery with all of our veranda staterooms on our ocean ships. Our river ships have our French balconies and our pictured windows. And they all have these incredible king size bed with luxury linens. And my favorite is our award-winning bathrooms. They have floor to ceiling glassed in showers, full size toiletries. So you don't have to pack any of that. And we have heated bathroom floors. Plus, there's lots of storage in the room. We have our flat screen interactive TVs, USB ports to make sure all of your electronics are charged. They're really a great place to wake up relaxed and fresh. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we created our cruises for that curious traveler. So remember, if you want to get into the most intimate nuances, a Viking cruise will take you there. What we've done when we designed our ships is we wanted to make sure every detail on board is going to enrich and enhance your experience. So you can actually enjoy the destination through our thoughtfully curated shipwide libraries, uh, lectures from our resident historians, even our Viking scientists, to cooking classes with our chefs and wine tasting with our sommeliers. We want you connected even when you're on board the ship. Now, when you are in destination, oh, I almost forgot my favorite part, the food and wine. Um, one of the great things too I love about working for Viking is we share the same belief that food and wine are a big part of your journey and our highly trained chefs on board, they're truly passionate about providing you a culinary rich experience. We locally source our ingredients, so our chefs create those authentic dishes to the regions that we're sailing in. Now let's go on to shore because the Viking way of explorations, we offer behind the scenes insights that no other travel company can offer. Our included shore excursions, well, it will provide you a must-see cultural or historic highlight with some delightful surprises as you're on them. All of these tours, they're expertly guided by local guides. So they have the knack of bringing the history, the destination to life as you're walking through. Now, as we include the expected and the iconic, such as visits to renowned museums and notable landmarks, we also go above and beyond by offering unique experiences that focus on local life, working world and privilege access. Now, what are these? Well, local life is one of is our excursions that will provide you a fascinating insight to the daily rhythms of life in that destination. For example, the picture we're looking at here, we do a visit in Uglij, Russia to this wonderful ladies home where you can enjoy vodka and you can learn how it is to live in a, uh, on a rural area in Russia. We also do unique culinary tours through Budapest, Vienna. Um, we also offer the opportunity to go visit elementary school children in Nubia. So it is a great experience to really understand how the locals live in the destination. Now, Working World, these excursions really give you an opportunity to see the, how the world is at work, uh, their big economic source in that sort of port that we're going to. So for example, Kinderdijk, which we're looking at here, uh, for those of you who know, a lot of the Netherlands is, it's a third of its underwaters and the Dutch are great with their water management. And Kinderdijk is a UNESCO heritage site consisting of 19 windmills. And when you're on our Rhine getaway, you can actually go into them and see the inner workings and understand why they were built and how they are operated. We also offer an array of working world stuff. For example, in France, you can go visit, uh, learn how to hunt for truffles or oyster hunting. Maybe go visit all the incredible wine cellars through France, Germany. We even visit Austria's Baca Valley. Or you can learn the art of cheese making. We offer a unique opportunities in working world. And then there's privilege access. Now, Privilege access is unique experiences because at Viking, we have the ability to open doors for you that are otherwise a little bit difficult for you to visit. So we've arranged exclusive entry just for our Viking guests to cultural treasures all around the world. You can go see vis seldom visited collections at world-class museums before and after hours, uh, be a special guest in private homes and palaces that aren't open to everyone. We even have the opportunity for you to attend private performances of the ballet and opera and really get an insider's view of these tours. So all of these are additional that what is great with working with Lisa is she can actually, before you even depart on your voyage, let you know about the additional experiences you can enjoy. Now, one of the things I love about going on a Viking cruise is we believe you shouldn't open up your wallet every time you want a cup of coffee, a glass of wine, or even that shore excursion. 
Instead, we provide you a cruise fare that's going to pretty much include everything you're going to need, including that uh, all onboard meals, your choice of multiple dining venues. We have eight dining venues on Viking Ocean, all included. Uh, specialty coffees and teas, bottled water, free Wi-Fi, first class hotels and room infotainment system, and all of our cruise fare includes government fees and taxes. All right, so before I go into some destinations, because I'm gonna go and I'm gonna talk about some of our top destinations with our products, but before I go into that, I wanna talk about health and safety because the world of travel has changed due to the ongoing pandemic. But at Viking, one of the things we do is the health and safety of our passengers and our crew has been our utmost standard even before the pandemic. And when the pandemic hit, we were one of the first cruise lines to cease operations of all of our ships. And when we ceased operations, we sought out the help of medical and scientific advisors to basically make sure that when we return, we are the safest fleet at sea. And we hired this incredible lady that we're looking at here. Her name is Vice, she is a Vice Admiral, and her name is Dr. Raquel Bono. Now she heads up, she is our Chief Health Officer at Viking. And not only is she a Vice Admiral, but she's a board certified trauma surgeon. And she was also the lady who put in the pandemic response in Washington State, and she worked on the Ebola pandemic. So on board of our ships, what we have done to ensure your safety and everybody else's on board of our safety is testing. We have learned that testing is the best way to stop any sort of spread on board of our ships. So we actually installed full working PCR laboratories on board of all of our ocean ships. And on our land river ships, we have partnered with land partners in each of the cities. So this allows us to do non-invasive everyday PCR testing. So it's just a saliva collection. We collect every morning, it's two milliliters of saliva and we process it every day in our onboard laboratory. So we can process up to 300 tests a day in our onboard laboratories to make sure all of our guests and crew are safe on board. So our crew does everyday testing as well. We've also, our ships are all brand new to begin with. So our air filtrations, we didn't share air filtration between staterooms, but we did do modifications to our filtration systems to help reduce those airborne pathogens by 99%. Uh, we use UVC lighting, electrostatic air filters to make sure we increase that level of safety on board. Our crew, it's really incredible to walk on board of our ships. I was very fortunate to be on board of our ocean ship for two weeks last year and three weeks on board of our river ships. And you see our crew walking around the ships performing tests on the handrails and the elevator buttons to make sure that extra safety. Now, when you are on board the ship, all guests and crew have to wear masks if you are walking around the ship. If you are sitting down enjoying a tea or a coffee or a cocktail or a meal with some other guests, you don't have to be wearing your masks. Uh, what is nice about it is we actually leave some masks in your stateroom so you don't have to worry about if you lose your mask or if you need extra masks. There's also countries we visit that require us to have N95 masks and we'll provide those for you too every night in your stateroom. We also ask you to do health and safety monitoring every day. So we just need you to check your temperature and just let us know with five quick health and safety questions to move on. So we want to make sure everybody is safe on board. And if we do have a situation where we do have a risk of illness, we have our medical centers on board of our ocean ships, which we've expanded to include um, proper facility equipment for COVID cases. And we also have our 24 seven hotlines on the rivers. Now, I get it. You may want to know what happens if you test positive on board. And it is a possibility. So what happens if we do have a positive test is we make sure our guest is positive. So we double check with another PCR test to make sure that is true positive. We also make sure that we uh, get anybody you have came in contact with. Uh, we will isolate you into your cabin, but we'll make sure you have all the comforts you need. We'll provide you meals, any sort of medical assistance that you may need at that point. And then our team on board of the ship will arrange at the next point of call for a hotel that you will be cared with at the same sort of level as a Viking standard with all your meals and everything taken care of. So we want to make sure you're safe. Now our 
uh, touring onshore is still working with our local partners. Some of our ports of call, you have to do a Viking shore excursion, but they're already included in your cruise fare. So you get one free shore excursion in every day. And our port partners, they're phenomenal. They actually follow the same standard of training as Viking. We have our whisper quiet headsets, so you don't have to join in a group. We also ask all of our guests to be vaccinated. So every guest needs to be fully vaccinated and classified as a fully vaccinated on board of Viking is you need to have uh, your two full, two full shots. And if you do qualify for a booster, we are asking you to make sure you have your booster shot. So if you have any questions regarding that, Lisa has all the details for you to make sure that you are in full coverage to cruise on board of Viking. All right, so now we talked about health and safety. So I hope you feel very comfortable on board of our ships to be health, healthy. To be honest, I felt safer on board of one of our ships than I did at home. I was very um, fortunate that while I've been traveling, I haven't had any incidents, but I managed to pick up COVID in my own home. So uh, it's very important that our everyday testing does work and we haven't had a breakout on board of Viking. All right, so let's talk about destinations. Now we have over 20 different river destinations on board of Viking, and I'm only going to highlight three of them. I wish I can go over all of our destinations we go to, but we don't have all night together. So let's talk about some of my favorite rivers. Now this is the first river cruise I want to talk about is especially if you're a first time river cruiser, this is the one you go on. This is our 15 day Grand European journey. So we go from Amsterdam to Budapest. And as you can see in the map, we sail along the Rhine, the Main, and the Danube rivers. Now we can go both directions. So we can go from Amsterdam to Budapest or Budapest to Amsterdam. Today, let's just journey start in Amsterdam. So as we leave Amsterdam, we're going to set sail on one of Europe's best loved rivers, the Rhine. So this is where we're going to experience the windmill dotted waterways of Kinderdijk. Then we are going to go explore the grand cathedrals of Cologne. We'll visit the historic and medieval towns of Coblence, Germany. Uh, you will also get experience. One of my favorite parts is the Rhine Gorge. So this is a gorgeous sailing area where our ship sails through and you get to enjoy it of castle, every mile is dotted along the shores. And it's a great because our program director shares stories. From there, we're gonna go into the Mine Canal. Now the Mine Canal is the land of Snow White. This is basically where Snow White was based in Britain. And it is quintessential Germany. You got the timber wooded houses of Miltenberg. You got the incredible Wurzburg Palace to go explore. And then into the mine Danube Canal, where we're going to stop and explore Nuremberg's complex past of World War II. We'll go get to see uh, the medieval cities of Bamberg and Regensburg, uh, the Passau, which was discovered by the Celts 2000 years ago, explore the 900 year old Gotway, uh, actually the Melk Abbey on this itinerary, and then Vienna and an overnight in Budapest. So that is 15 days right through the heart of Europe. Now, if you don't have the full 15 days, don't worry, you can actually split this itinerary up in two. So we either do an eight day cruise down the Rhine or the Danube. So work with Lisa, let her know what you really want to see, what your passion is to see. So if you want to learn about World War II and you want to trace maybe some family that was in World War II and you want to go to Nuremberg, Lisa can work that out. Or if your dream was to see the Rhine Gorge, she can make sure that you, she finds the right itinerary for you. Now, we're going to one of my favorite countries. And this is, I have a lot of favorite biking itineraries. I'm a travel person, I love to travel, but if you are like me and you love everything French, their amazing food, their amazing shopping, Lisa and I were just talking about how much you love, we love Paris. This is going to be the itinerary for you. This I like to call our Tour de France because it includes two of our most popular itineraries in France. So the first leg is we overnight in Paris and where our ship docks is right under the Eiffel Tower. So you are in the heart of Paris. And then we cruise down the Seine where you're going to explore Normandy's World War II beaches. You're going to walk in the footsteps of Jonah Arc. You're going to stroll through Monet's garden in Givenchy. So this will give you a true experience down the Seine. From there, we come back to Paris, we overnight again in Paris, and then we take the train down to Lyon. Now, Lyon uh, is the, if you're a food lover like me, this is the French gastronomy capital. 
This is all of the most incredible Michelin star restaurants are located in this region of France. And then from there, we are gonna cruise down the Rhone and you're going to get to savor some of the most renowned wines, the Beaujolais. Uh, we visit Chateau Neuf de Pop along here. Uh, you'll have the opportunity to hunt for truffles, see how chevrod cheese is made, uh, go check out Van Gogh and Arles, or even explore the incredible Palace of the Popes in Avignon. So this is a 15 day excursion. Now keep in mind, this is another one where we've combined it two itineraries together. So if you only wanna do an eight day one, you can do an eight day down the Seine or an eight day down the Rhone. All right, now our third river itinerary I wanna highlight, and then I'm gonna to transition to ocean. So this is Portugal. And if you really wanna explore one of Europe's oldest and most renowned wine regions, cruising down the UNESCO Douro River Valley is worth it. So this is a cruise tour. So we start with a hotel stay in Lisbon. And Lisbon's gorgeous. It's newly invigorated. Uh, it's such a bright city to go with all the trendy art galleries and the incredible restaurants. And then from there, we will take you to go cruise down the Douro. So you'll get to experience two of Iberia's oldest university towns, Coimbra and Salamanca, Spain. You'll get to roam the port warehouses of Porto. You'll get to enjoy traditional Portuguese cuisine and um, incredible fado music. So this is our Portugal Rivers of Gold cruise tour, 10 days. So if, like I said, if you want to experience Portugal, this is the way to immerse yourself. So over 20 different itineraries. So we're all through Europe. You can do some unique itineraries, like for example, a visit um, the Netherlands in tulip season and go explore Kuchenhof Gardens. A Christmas cruise down the Elba or even the Rhine and the Danube is absolutely pure magic. Um, not only do we visit the Seine and the Rhone in France, we do Bordeaux round trip. So there's a lot of different itineraries. We're even in Southeast Asia and Egypt. So uh, work with Lisa. Once again, just let her know what the biggest thing you want to see and she can find the itinerary for you. Now, if you don't fancy a flight across the pond in 2022, don't worry because we're launching our first ever North American river ship. Our mighty Mississippi, she's joining our fleet just in a couple months and she's going to look like all of our Viking ships. So she's going to feature that clean Scandinavian design. We're going to have familiar public spaces that are on our other ships, like our Explorer's Lounge, our Aquavit Terrace, but we've reimagined some spaces just for this Mississippi ship. So we have our plunge pool at the back or our bow at the front of the ship where you can really enjoy the scenery as we sail down the Mississippi. Now, the Mississippi cruise is going to offer you a different type of cross-country tour. Uh, the Mississippi itself is about 2,300 miles long. It starts up there at Lake uh, Minnesota's Lake Itasca, and then it goes all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. Now, we are going to be offering anywhere from our three eight-day itineraries to our 15-day itinerary. Now, let's start with our three eight-day itineraries. Now, this is the lower part of the Mississippi, and we're in this part of the Mississippi in the winter months. Um, Nobody wants to be down here in August, but anyway, I love this Mississippi. So this part of the Mississippi overflows with that Southern charm. You got that incredible Civil War history and that good old Southern hospitality. The incredible music that I love, that Dixieland jazz, the gospel, the blues, and of course, savoring the cuisine of the Cajun and the Creole and the history. I, you can immerse yourself in a great time in this part of the Mississippi. And then we travel to the Northern stretches where we focus our America's heartland and our America's great river. Uh, here, you're gonna hear stories of the pioneers. You're gonna walk in the footsteps of Mark Twain and see the white washing wall. Uh, you're gonna also enjoy, oh, the music, of course, the ragtime, the polka, the Norwegian folk. And I cannot forget about the food. You have those Wisconsin cheeses, the craft beers, um, the hearty stews, the barbecues. So this is a great adventure. Now we start in 2022. We are going to be open to 2024. Now I want to remind you the Viking cruise ships, river ocean expedition, we're small ships. We are filling up. Uh, 23, 24 is filling up quite fast. So if you are interested in a cruise on a small ship, not just with biking, it is actually a lot of cruise lines and a lot of tour operators because of the fact um, we're fitting 
so much travel into a condensed amount of time. So if you are interested, don't miss out. Uh, I'll talk about different ways that you can make sure your uh, investment is protected. All right, so let's transition to ocean. I love our ocean ships. These are the ships that were designed by our river guests, and we have won for five consecutive in a five consecutive years number one ocean cruise line small ship. Our fleet of seven ships offered nine, as I mentioned, nine hundred and thirty guests, and they are purposely designed for destination cruising. So our ships are small enough so we can navigate into intimate ports that those mega liners cannot. This allows us longer days, even overnights in a lot of our ports. And when I show up some of our top itineraries, you'll see. And it really is the way destination cruising is meant to be. It's not about being on board the ship. The ship is truly your luxury hotel to take you to explore the destination. On board, every stateroom's a veranda, so we want to make sure we bring the world's beauty right to your doorstep when you wake up. Uh, we offer eight different dining options, which has we have more indoor and outdoor dining options than any other ship in its class. Um, we also have one of the first uh, infinity pools at the back of the ship. Now, I mentioned earlier, other cruise lines are building more bigger ships with more theme park style attractions, attracting to a broad spectrum at ages. At Viking, we are taking a different approach. Remember, all of our cruises are designed to be culturally enriching and destination focused. So on board of our ships, we have complement all of our onshore experiences with an onboard lecture program designed to shed more light on the destinations, art, architecture, music, geopolitics, natural world, and so much more. So we have bring on a host of experts. So we have a wide range from authors to archeologists, to former diplomats, to news correspondents, and they're all excited to share their knowledge on board of the ship. We also bring on performances and destination performance that really represent the cultural and performing arts of the regions we're sailing in. So I mentioned this before, you're not going to find a casino on board of Viking Ocean. You're not going to find kids under the age of 18. No umbrella drinks, no photographers chasing you around, no jackpot bingo, no inch by the gold, no $5 shops. That is not Viking. We want you off of our ship. But when you're on board, you can enjoy beer and wine with lunch and dinner. You can enjoy all of our alternative restaurants with no extra charge. Um, maybe Wi-Fi your friends and family at home to share what an amazing job. We have laundry nets on each of our floors where you can wash your clothes, soap and everything's for free. We have a true Nordic spa with a, a steam room, a sauna, even a snow grotto and a colossal therapy pool where you can go in and use it for free. Now, if you want a treatment like a massage or something, that's going to cost you extra. But don't worry, they're not going to try to pressure you to buy lotions and potions. So we don't want to nickel and dime you on board. I mentioned we have eight dining options. Remember earlier I said we believe food and wine are a big part of the journey. We expanded on that with Viking Ocean. So we have our restaurant, which offers a wide range of culinary options. We have our alternative dining, like our chef's table, which is a five course wine pairing extravaganza. Our Manfredi's, which has the best Italian pasta I've ever had. And they serve half size dishes. So you can have multiple different types of pasta in one sitting. And of course, our Mamsum's Norwegian Deli, which you can get a quick open face sandwich, amazing split pea soup. Or if that's not enough, we have our World Cafe, our pool side grill, and 24 hour room service. All right, so we sail anywhere from an eight day to our 136 day cruise around the world. Today, what I'm going to do is just cover three of our most beloved itineraries in three different destinations. And then once again, similar to what I said with River, sit down with Lisa, let her know what you wanna see. First, I'm going to talk about Scandinavian and Northern Europe. So our owner of our company and our CEO, he is a, a Norwegian a gentleman, and we have some of the best itineraries in Northern Europe. Um, we follow a lot of the old Viking trade routes. Now, this is one of our favorite. It's the Viking homelands. And what I love about this is we offer three overnights on this itinerary. So you can enjoy an overnight in Stockholm, Majestic St. Petersburg, and scenic Bergen. Now, we also get to explore the incredible, charming, and historic cities of Tallinn and Gdansk. We visit Helsinki, Berlin, Copenhagen, and my favorite is the breathtaking views of the Eid Fjord there. Um, I've sailed the Norwegian Fjords and I'm going back again this June and it is one of the most breathtaking experiences 
of my life and I cannot wait to experience it again. So if you take a look at this 15 day itinerary, you're gonna visit eight countries. You're gonna enjoy 11 guided tours. And if you notice in 15 days, we're only at sea one day. So uh, that will give you your day to relax and enjoy the infinity pool or the spa. Now we offer a variety, like we have over 20 different Mediterranean itineraries. So we have itineraries that focus on the Holy Land, focus on Greece alone, focus on Italy alone. I'm going to share today one of our most popular is our Mediterranean Odyssey. This will give you a really good overview of some of the most fascinating ports in the Med. So you'll get to see magical Canal Lace Venice, historic Rome with the awe-inspiring Colosseum. There's Dubrovnik, which is a hidden medieval jewel, I should say, in the Adriatic there. Oh, and I almost forgot the picturesque ports of the French Riviera. Well, you, you'll also get to enjoy an overnight stay in Barcelona. So once again, another 13-day itinerary with one sea day. The rest are in ports. And then um, we are in the Caribbean in the winter months. Uh, there's nothing like it coming from if you're in the northern area where it's nice and cold to go down to the Caribbean. And I love our West Indies Explorer itinerary because we start deep in the Southern Caribbean, avoiding those long sea days that most cruises start, right? So we go round trip San Juan. So you will be able to spend more time exploring the ports. And in this 11 day itinerary, we are at port every day. So you can really immerse yourself in the British and the French and the Dutch cultures. Um, and also, of course, you get to see Tortilla, St. Lucia, Dominica, St. Martin and St. Thomas. So those are three itineraries I wanted to share with you on Viking Ocean. Now we have our world cruise. Um, a lot of people are enjoying longer cruises and booking longer cruises, and that includes our world cruise. So we have a 138 day world cruise. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to update this slide. Our 22 and 23 world cruise is actually already sold out. Um, we don't have any space on it, but we do have space on our 23 and 24 world cruise. Uh, the first ship actually sold out. So we actually have two ships doing a world cruise in 24. So if you want to try something unique, uh, you been at home for a while and you want to go explore for a longer you might want to check our world cruise we also have grand journeys so our grand journeys are anything from a 20 day to our 80 day cruise so uh, we offer journeys throughout the world as i mentioned so we're in scandinavian northern europe uh, offering unique itineraries where you can go experience the midnight sun or the northern lights we offer all through the med as i mentioned we're in the Americas in the Caribbean. So we also do Panama Canal cruises. We're in Alaska. We visit the Eastern Seaborn, uh, Australia and Asia. And also you can find our river and ocean experiences. So um, there is a lot for you to choose of a Viking ocean, but if you really want a small ship destination ocean experience, I definitely sit down to talk to Lisa about Viking ocean because it is truly an amazing experience on board of the ocean ships. All right, I am going to finish up pretty quick here. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is maybe you don't want to go all the way um, to may, across the world, or maybe you do. Maybe you want to go to the furthest reaches of the poles, but you can do that with Viking as well. So after leading the river industry, what we've done is we've taken all of our expertise of building our river ships and our ocean ships, and we built two polar class six expedition uh, vessels. So this will allow us to sail to the Antarctic, which actually we just did our first sailing on the Octonis a couple of weeks ago. And we are going to be able to bring her into the Great Lakes. So she is narrow enough to fit through the Welling Canal. Now we're gonna be offering indoor and more indoor and outdoor viewing areas than any other vessel in these regions. A lot of the vessels, especially on the Great Lakes, they're old survey vessels and they're not modern vessels. With Viking, we built our ships to be like a platform. We're in some of the best scenery of the world. So you're going to want us to view and make sure you see everything. So we have our incredible rooms, like our floor to ceiling windows in our aula. Um, you can kind of see the aula in this picture. It's picture behind the fences terrace. So the fences terrace, as you can see there, this is at the back of the ship with fire pits where you can sit down, cozy up and really enjoy the scenery. And then behind there is our aula or the auditorium where you can get constant views. We have our explorer's lounge, which is a two-story lounge with views, our Nordic balcony staterooms, 
And what is incredible about our expedition ships is we've expanded on um, enlightening on board. So we've also made sure that everything on board of the ship is going to enlighten and enhance your experience to really immerse in the destination. We believe uh, participating in scientific discovery with these ships is a true importance for us. So we are going to have over 25 different world-class scientists on every sailing that we're going to have. We have an onboard laboratory where they're doing scientific discoveries. So we will have lectures from geologists to botanists to zoologists, and you'll have the opportunity to partake in all of their scientific discoveries. So where are we going to go? Of course, the Arctic. So we do a 13 day adventure starting in Buenos Aires with an overnight where you're going to get a chance to meet our expedition leaders. From there, we're going to take a charter flight to Ushuaia, which is the southernmost part in um, the southernmost city, I should say, to board the ship. Day three, we're going to cross the exciting Drake packet passage into the Arctic Peninsula, where you're going to explore for six days. On our way back, you're going to get a chance to sail Cape Horn and then finish your swile. Now, we're going to be the first luxury line into the Great Lakes, and I am so excited. Growing up on the Great Lakes, they have been my playground, but I am so excited to experience them by a Viking ship. And we are going to be offering in 2022 three different itineraries. Our first one, Niagara and the Great Lakes. So this itinerary, we're going to start in Toronto. We're going to cross Lake Ontario through the Welling Canal, and we'll stop in Port Colborne. So you can explore Niagara Falls and Niagara on the lake. From there, we're going to go into Lake Erie to Point Pelee. And then we'll stop in Detroit into Lake Huron through the Mackinac Strait with a stop at Mackinac Island and into Milwaukee. From there, we will go on to our Great Lakes Explorer itinerary. Now this itinerary, we're starting in Milwaukee, crossing back over again through the Mackinac Strait, and then we're gonna spend three days in Georgian Bay. Now this is a bio biosphere UNESCO site, and you're gonna get a chance to use all of our toys. We have a submarine on board, we have kayaks, we have zodiacs, we have ribs that you can really go explore the undiscovered islands in um, Georgian Bay. We'll stop in three towns, Little Current, Killarney, and Perry Sound. Then we will go through the incredible Sioux Locks and ending with an overnight in Thunder Bay. Our third itinerary that you could choose from is our undiscovered Great Lakes. From here, we're gonna go from Thunder Bay, circumnavigating Lake Superior with stops in Duluth, Apostle Islands, Houghton, transit through the Sioux Locks, Mackinac Island, ending in Milwaukee. So we're offering these three itineraries that are available for 2022. Uh, we do have some space left. Uh, I hope to jump on myself. So maybe if you wanna join me, I would love to see you on board one of these itineraries. Now in 2023, well, we opened up our 2022 itineraries. We heard a lot of feedback from our Viking guests that they wanted one itinerary that will allow them to do all five of the Great Lakes. And this is coming in 2023. So you can actually reach out to Lisa and talk to her about it if you wanna experience all five Great Lakes. So going from Duluth, Minnesota, we're gonna go from Thunder Bay there, um, around Lake Superior in through the Sioux Locks. We're going to go into Georgian Bay, across Lake Huron, into the Mackinac Strait, into Lake Michigan, um, stop out Alpena, and then down yeah. and through Lake Erie and into through Niagara Falls and into Toronto. So that really covers all five of the Great Lakes. All right, so I'd like to thank all of you for joining. Now, I understand, I talked about this a little bit earlier, that if you are interested in going on a vacation in 22 and 23, actually, I should say, and 24, it is so important that you work with Lisa now because space is filling up quick. And we are offering our Explorer sale, which will give you a two for one deposit um, that will give you the opportunity to book your cruise. We also have risk free. So if you are looking at 2022, maybe the fall or a Christmas market this year, and you're still a little hesitant, well, with our risk free, you can cancel and change. 14 days prior. We're also offering free air. Remember that Grand European tour that I started off in the first? You can have free air for that itinerary. So reach out to Lisa and she will be able to work that out. And our final thing that I quickly want to mention before we open up for some questions is because you are joining Lisa here today, I have an exclusive promotion just for you guys that if you're interested in a Viking cruise, uh, we will offer you, you have to book within the next two weeks, but we'll offer you a hundred dollar per person 
shipboard credit. So um, that is really exciting. That can be used to any shore excursions or anything additional you would like. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I know that for myself, I, I, I have to say, uh, even though I, I love traveling abroad, the, the idea of biking coming to the Great Lakes mm -hmm. has got me really excited. I'm so looking forward to that. You know where I'm going to be when that, sh that ship pulls into Toronto. I will be right beside you. Actually, I'm going to tell you right now, I actually live in Burlington, Ontario, and I have an apartment that overlooks Lake Ontario. So I cannot wait to sit on my patio and watch the ship come across the lake. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be exciting. That is for sure. It, it's yeah. going to be a fabulous itinerary. Just mm -hmm. an absolute fabulous itinerary. So I don't know. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Jordana? If you do. Just uh, unmute yourself and jump right in. No, no questions. Look, they look fantastic. <laughs> Wish I could do them all. <laughs> well, you know, Sandy, we'll we'll get on that Great Lakes ship and then we'll come down and visit you. All right. <laughs> yeah, no, they do look they do look amazing. I because I I know I love the European rivers. You know, the Rhine. I haven't done them all. I've done the Rhine, the um, the um the Danube, the Po, but, you know, and then I've also been on, you know, the Seine and that, but I can't wait to go back, but there's something about the Great Lakes that mm -hmm. calls me. <laughs> um, can I ask a question regarding the, um, uh, on a river cruise, if you were to test positive for COVID, um, you mentioned that you would stop at a port and they would help you get a hotel that would include your meals, et cetera, yeah. uh, while you, I guess, isolate. That is exactly is that right? it. Yep, that is exactly okay. it. So it's important to always, <laughs> especially right now too, is to work with Lisa for travel insurance because <laughs> um, flights and stuff, but we will make sure that you're arranged and taken care of. So it's not going to be one of those things, Anne, that you're like, you've tested positive. Here you go. Here's your suitcase. We won't do that to you. We will make sure that you're taken care of into a hotel. Your flight and everything is arranged home. So you do have a way to get home. Right. But it's basically depending on what your insurance coverage provides for that, right? Exactly. Exactly. Right. And so, there's a okay. lot so, of insurance companies out there right now that do cover that. I have to say right. that's probably been my number one sale lately is um, travel insurance, COVID-19 coverage, where it not only covers um, the medical costs, but there, there's payments towards any expenses you would incur for accommodation and meals. Right, right. Yeah, I, my policy I know covers $150 a day for up to a total of 10 days. Yeah. So for accommodation, accommodation and food. Um, and of course, your medical is well, depending on hopefully you're not sick enough that you need to, you know, visit the hospital mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. But yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Just so you know, Anne, we haven't had a breakout on board of our ships because of our everyday testing. And right. usually when we do have a positive case, it comes on the day of embarkation when people are making their way to the ship. So we catch them even before they get on the ship. So right. Yeah, I'm knocking on wood right now. Is <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right. I have a question. Um, my name is Trisha, and um, I I don't have anybody at this point in my life that would be a second person, you know, to share a room or anything. I do know that there's a number of travel groups out there. Um, you know, women's groups and things like that. I'm sure I could find somebody, you know. Um, but I was just curious to find out if you ever have people who travel alone. Yeah, so we do have people that travel alone. And um, Lisa can work with you because certain sailings, we actually have certain discounts for solo travelers. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I know from my own personal experience being on one particular sailing with uh, two of my friends, there was this one woman traveling solo from Australia. And, you know, we were busy all day with our, our daily excursions on the cruise, but every night we kept a seat at the table for her and we just waved her over and said, how was your day? And that was sort of typical. If we hadn't have done that, you know, it's, it's, 
such an intimate setting that there's likely going to be someone else that would have called her over. But we we made a point of um, making sure she was included every every evening for dinner. Well, I think the good thing that I can say is that traveling by myself is something I've done before. Um, when I was in college, I studied in Salzburg, Austria, and subsequently I traveled quite a bit um, on the year rails and things like that. And it was almost always by myself. Occasionally there was one or two classmates that, you know, in the beginning that came on board, but um, otherwise, and, you know, people would say to me, especially when I got into um, the train station in Rome, they're like, okay, you need to know there's a lot of people there and their only thing is like negative, you know, it's to bring harm to you. It's like, please don't look at your watch. Don't give time to anybody. Don't, um, you know, don't, if somebody says, do you need a place to stay? Just keep walking. I said, just ignore everybody because <laughs> they're all going to be guys and they're all going to be asking you these questions. And the one that's so easy is you give them the time of day and somebody comes along and does something to you. I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, this was, you know, 25 years ago, but I just, I, I don't have any difficulties traveling alone, but my husband passed three years ago. So, and he, he was never a fan of cruising. So I'm like, okay, it's my time. <laughs> well, you know what? Um, I've always seen solo travelers on the rivers. And there's, a never, there's never a better way to meet people than when you travel solo. I mean, I do like traveling with my friends, but we were just speaking, Jordana and I, how I went to Paris by myself for a month. I travel by myself all the time too. It's my favorite way to travel. It. Yeah. I, I find I meet more people on my own. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I, I find that as well. You meet more people when you travel solo. And, there, and when you're doing something like a Viking cruise, you've it's it's sort of packaged for you the opportunity to run into people it mm -hmm. just happens naturally yeah well that's great i appreciate it because um i just moved from chicago to atlanta because i wanted to get away from all the snow um <laughs> and um in doing so um you know staying with a friend just to kind of get my grounds you know my bearings set and whatnot um, and so now there's been an apartment that's become available for rent right smack dab in the richest neighborhood downtown Atlanta. And I'm like, hot diggity dog. You know what? That'll work out great. <laughs> <laughs> Who can I meet and make sure he's not married? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so are there, are there any other questions for Jordana? Who's Jordana? Okay, Me. So Someone has a question. Hey. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, what I'm wondering about is is meal time when people are together, no masks, talking with alcohol, talking louder. Uh, <laughs> how you protect against COVID uh, in that situation? Yeah. Um, well, what we do is people have to wear masks if you are walking around the ship. Uh, meal time and uh, basically cocktail hour. Most people usually just stay within their own little tables uh, because everybody, and I've noticed this with the last two cruises, because we're all tested every day, um, everybody feels a little bit more relaxed because everybody's tested every day. But what I did notice is people stick with their own bubbles for dinner and meal times and stuff. So if you two don't feel comfortable dining with anybody, you can stick in your own little table. If you pick up another couple that you guys stick together with and travel with, I've noticed people dining with them. So. Myself, no, as, as I mentioned, I travel alone all the time. So I just stuck with the same four, same two couples, the whole cruise. <laughs> no, one of the things we've liked, we've, we've done two biking cruises with mm -hmm. my friend, Anne, who asked the earliest question. And she basically said, you know, we basically, despite the four of us traveling together, we often sat at tables for eight just to share the experience with other people. You often learn a lot about what their previous experiences, where they've been before, shared adventures and so on. So we did bike, we've done two biking cruises, the Amsterdam one, um, I'm just trying to think where we disembarked, Basel, uh, Basel and then the oh, one wow. from Budapest over New Year's. Both were over New Year's actually several years ago, and then Budapest to Passau. Yeah. So we, and those experiences were amazing. Yeah. So, and I've noticed they're very similar right now. And people, like I said, the everyday testing, people feel safer about it because we're kind of already in our bubble, right? So, yeah. 
but yeah, that's my favorite part about Viking cruises too, is talking to people and meeting people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I want to thank you everyone for taking the time out and um, eventually I'm going to be uploading this onto my YouTube channel. So if anyone, um, you know, wants to view it again, you can just look up Lisa Booth and you'll be able to catch this along with the three other videos that Jordana and I did and other destinations that, that uh, I've uh, been chatting about. So once again, I really want to thank Jordana again for joining me, much appreciated. And I want to thank everyone who took time out this evening to jump in on this call. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I appreciate it. Okay. Bye. Bye. Take care. Take care. Okay. Bye. Can we put your contact info in the chat? Yeah, the I'm YouTube? going to put it in. I'm going to put in my email address. Oh, okay. I have it. Oh, I should have done the thing. I didn't know you could do a whole big thing there. The there we go. Way. There. If anyone has any questions for me, it's lisa.booth at newwavetravel.net. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for joining. Good night. Good night.